So we land, we link up with the local militia. Um, my captain knew the guy, so they, you know, m- met up, high five, and then we split. We had one element go to Upper Camdash, and then another one flank, and was I want to say about like a few, about fifty meters from us, all on the high ground, and we just waited because we knew since it was nighttime, they're not gonna fight us at night, but as soon as the sun comes up. That's when they're going to start fighting. And sure enough, man, as soon as day breaks, it was just fucking all hell just broke loose. Mm. And the way they were organized, like we didn't realize they were right on top of us. Like we heard the gunfire, but we couldn't identify them because they spent a shit ton of time prepping their positions. So what they did was they poked holes through the mud huts and they got some standoff and they were shooting through those holes and to where we couldn't see their muzzle flash, right? We just heard the rounds coming in. Like, they were literally no shit five to ten meters away, like, in mud huts just fucking engaging. Um, So we fought them for about, shit, man, like four days straight of just fucking going back and forth with those dudes. Damn, Like, it was four fucking days, and the, the... the first, the first um, twelve hours, we tallied like forty nine EKIAs, wow. right? So we're on Upper Camdash, we're engaging. Finally, we saw like like activities in the fucking uh, doors in front of us. So we we're like, okay, this is where they're at. They're in the buildings. So wherever there was a hole, we would just fucking lob. Um, um, call Gustav's into those oh, buildings yeah. and then uh, uh, two or three rounds. So we would have elements covering us while one of us run outside, put around, and then just fucking send it. And we would rotate because you can only fire like Four. two. Well, shit, we, yeah. <laughs> we only fired two yeah. uh, because you can go as far as four before your ears start bleeding. Yeah. Right. Um, and then so we would rotate, guys are covering our movement, and then we run out lob fucking rounds into those buildings yeah right and then for the ones that were a, 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 a little bit lower we would do fucking um gun runs on them right so we would call because we had a shit ton of air and then we had a shit ton of um, um call g rounds because we had 150 commandos so when we were leaving we would give them each you know rounds to carry um so yeah we fought those dudes for four days straight and then we spent an additional three days out there just going through the village and conducting um, SSE. So seven days total in Camdash um, during that firefight. Uh, when it was all said and done, I want to say it was at least 180 plus EKIAs. Damn. Uh, just from those fucking uh, uh, four days of, of fighting. For, I mean, for four days, were you guys getting resupplied with ammo and shit? How did, no, you, how did no. you stretch that out? So we, we went in heavy. Yeah. Um, Because when we got the intel report as far as how many dudes were there, and again, we had 150 commandos, so we went in with our resupply. Like, we had it on the bird with us. So, I mean, how many rounds were you guys carrying a piece ballpark? So, um, on our person, we had 210, and then we each had an assault bag full of ammunition. Oh, wow. Right? And then we had a team song that was spot on, and while all this is going on, he had hired some locals and he got a mule and he was making, <laughs> <laughs> he was making runs back to the HLZ, which was behind us and grabbing ammunition, food, water, and taking them to the different positions. So there's belt fed, oh, magazine yeah. fed, and then mule fed. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Right. Dude, that's um, wild, man. And then, so we had um, uh, us with our long gun and, pistols and all that shit then the commandos had two 240 bravos with them that they carried yeah right so we had just on the fucking uh, ridge line on upper camdash just lead being fired into lower camdash and they um the militia told us when when we came in there it was like look all the good guys are right here everybody else that's down there they're all fucking shitheads yeah and we're like perfect so yeah it was just but those dudes were fucking relentless man yeah like, we would no shit lay waste to them, and then we would watch them conduct Kazavak. So they would haul ass with a pickup truck, throw that dead on there, and then haul ass to Pakistan or wherever, and then come back with more fucking dudes. Man. And it was just days and days of that shit. Yeah. Like, fuck. 
So yeah, we ended up going back to that area um, for a second operation that was pretty similar. But that first one was was like a fucking SF dude's wet dream. Like I always wow. tell people with that one because it yeah. was, yeah, it That's was epic. awesome. The uh, was the canine and, and handler American. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Were they SF guy? It yeah. Was an SF guy. Yeah. Any yeah. good shit with him? No, he was all. So I think we have a similar program to what you guys have, where operators can become yeah. um, dog handlers. And we would use um, him just just for searching purposes. Yeah. Um, if we had a shithead that looked suspicious, a little bit of scare tactics here and there, I get him talking because they fucking hate dogs. Yeah. I don't know why, dude. But yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, we mainly use you use him throughout that operation for sniffing out IEDs and just getting unruly dudes that take off for whatever reason. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, all right. So that was that deployment. Uh, Deployments three and four. Um, how did how did those shake out as far as uh, what the big mission was, and then anything on the kind of micro? Yeah. So again, the the first one again was just commandos. Um, the second one, not the first one, but the second one was all commandos. The third one was also commandos, and this one was more the same, just going around finding bad dudes and fucking uh, doing work, but. One mission that stood out for me uh, the most throughout those, the rest of my deployments was when I almost got my face shot off. Like I always tell people this one because uh, a lot of people joke about their being a live day. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like they always tell that story. Um, this one was mine. So we, this one is sort of northeast. Um, we're working out of Gardez district at this time. Uh, again, running commandos. Um, and we, go support this first group team that's getting ready to rip out. Um, rip out just means they're leaving country and uh, coming back home, right? So we're conducting this clearing operation. And when we conduct clearing operation, like we clear the entire village. And what that looks like, if you're fighting age male, you're coming with us. Like we, we don't care. Like we'll, we'll go through your house. Because what they were doing is like the dudes would hide all their guns. And as soon as we leave, they would pick them up and shoot us from behind. So we're like, that shit's not happening anymore. So when we go through, if you're fighting age male, we establish the fucking ma'am train. Everybody just walks along with us as we're clearing. So we do this and we get to the point where it's time to strong point. Because once we get them all together, um, because these operations are normally 24 hours, right? So we spend 24 hours on the ground. we got up all the fighting age mail. We, we put them in a courtyard and then we establish security within whatever compound that we've taken. So we get done clearing this village. We're strong point. We have security. We were anticipating a fight, but it never came. So dudes are like, I guess this is a dry hole. Like, whatever. Let's bring out the American flag, bring out the Texas flag. And we just fucking had a big old flagpole and we're just hanging out sunbathing while dudes are you know, drinking water, whatever, right? 